Wow. You guys like that, huh? You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh my god. It even has a transistor. Thank you guys seriously so much for all the support on the last video and, and all the really nice comments. They, they mean a lot to me. So if you're newly subscribed, you know, part of the ship, part of the crew, grab a map. No, but seriously, thanks so much. And a bunch of you had a lot of really great suggestions. So that's what we're going to go over this week. Some suggestions and I think a pretty big improvement at the end. Many people pointed out that my NAND gate serendipity was actually an example of De Morgan's law at work and some gave simpler ways of making the XOR gate. Most people though were pointing out the major issue with the gates from the last video, which is that they're manual. I had to manually trigger them. Um, they can't just trigger each other, which means you can't wire them up in a, I don't know, like a series or, what does somebody say they don't compose? I like that, it makes them sound musical. Don't worry, I did find quite the solution to our little problem. I love that this project has become something of a community effort here, so please keep the feedback coming. I read all of the comments. All right, so let's check out what this 8-bit brain of mine managed to put together. Improved gates. Many of you guys pointed out that a better way to make the XOR gate would be to stack two springs and then set up the wiring so that it only completes when one spring is extended and not the other. And I thought that was a really great idea. So I did try it, but it turns out that when the springs are attached to each other, the game treats them as the same thing and triggers them at the same time, which kind of ruins the idea. I tested around with unattached stacked springs, but in effect it becomes two on and off switches, like wired in parallel, which is basically an OR gate. Flipping one upside down sort of solves that problem, but then I saw it. An elegant solution to a complicated problem. If we just scooch this gate over, we get one spring sitting regular, and then one lifted up and upside down, which turns out is a very nice XOR gate. Seeing as the NAND gate from the last video was an accidental example of De Morgan's Law, something that I definitely know about and didn't have to Google, this may be another satisfying representation of that. Now I'm not sure if it is De Morgan's Law, but the XOR truth table, which is <laughs> it's a very dramatic name for these charts, it's very symmetrical in this case. It's almost like a palindromes, like the same backwards as it is forwards. So maybe the second gate being upside down and reverse of the first makes sense? I don't know. Cool math games. By messing around with the XOR gate, I accidentally found another gate. If you put the lips of two XOR gates together and make them kiss, they do this thing where it only lets power through if both of them are turned off. This is a NOR gate. Not sure if we need it yet, but you know, it's nice to have. Since this XOR gate is significantly less resource heavy than the last one, I wanted to see if I can make that manual half adder from the last video leaner and meaner. It'll still be manual though, so if you want to see the transistor version, check out the timestamps in the bar or the description. The AND gate part of this is basically the same as before, but like I said, leaner. Gaunt, if you will. I mean, look at it compared to the first version. Wild difference! A lot of this can be simplified further, too. It's only here for display purposes. Like The core of this can be made with as little as six attachments, I think. Maybe less. So that bodes well for the future calculator. And check it out. Works even better than the first one. So thanks for the suggestion, guys. Transistors. So let me explain the main issue with the last video, which I touched on only very briefly at the beginning. In case you don't know, because you've touched real grass in the last month instead of just Hylian rice, in Tears of the Kingdom there are basically two types of power. In my opinion, there's actually three. There's electricity, which can come in the form of minerals like topaz, food stuff, uh, monster parts, weapon effects, and of course lightning. The other is Zonai devices. These include rockets, springs, batteries, and like basically everything that's part of the traditional building system. The third power source is Link himself, in the form of carrying things, moving them with Ultra Hand, shooting or hitting stuff, and object interaction, like using a control stick. Now of course this isn't ideal because you don't want to be running around hitting every single gate as it goes through. It's clear Nintendo didn't want too much overlap between the two primary power types, probably to prevent people from overloading the switch too fast. Link can power and interact with both, but they really can't interact with each other except through shock emitters. And of course the natural mechanics of the game, like wind and gravity. 
Luckily though, Nintendo left us some objects in shrines that I also briefly mentioned at the beginning of last video, and these are powered with electricity. Which brings me to this Reddit post. Now I am a firm believer in credit where it is due, and this guy's bill is on the house because he's got some credit coming. A month ago, before anyone had figured out any of this logic gate stuff, Luke had already figured out how to make a transistor using only electricity and no Zonai power. Now, to be honest with you all, I'd actually already seen this post before making my last video, and it's the reason why I wanted to use electricity to build the logic gates. So, big shout out to Luke for this one. In case you want to get these objects for yourself, in the Gimmick Shrine, which is located here in the middle of this cool little spiral, there is a puzzle involving a fan and a motor. Both of these objects can be fused, and the motor is powered by electricity. So when you go to this shrine, bring with you two empty weapons or shields, and fuse them with the propeller and the motor and then leave the shrine and travel over to Terrytown, where you can pay this literal child some chump change to break your stuff for you. You can do the same thing to get the capacitor battery, which I'm sure we'll use at some point, from the Mogawak Shrine, which is located here. So after you've unfused them, you can put them together with other objects or fuse them together normally and save it to your auto build. One of the things that I wanted to try while I was here was trying to make like a simple turning gate that would swing closed when it was on and then just fall open when it was off from gravity. That didn't quite work though, because it turns out that the motor, whenever it's turned off, stays in the same position that it was off in. And then it has to be pushed or acted on some other way in order to change positions. So the way that this works, and the thing that Luke discovered, is by taking advantage of an open springs, um, springiness, the fan below blows the metal plate and catches the wind and lifts it up just enough to complete the circuit. Okay, but I'm tired of Terrytown. The people here are so rude. Let's go back to the mountainside. <sighs> Nothing like the smell of dirt and Goron sweat to make you want to build something. Here's the same concept, just expanded into the AND gate. The beautiful part about this is that each switch only takes two attachments to make, just the fan to the motor and then the wall to the switch. It's super simple and I think it looks super cool. Unfortunately, the beautiful X or gate that we made at the beginning of this video, it doesn't work with the fans. Um, the fans don't seem to push down as hard as they push up or sideways, I'm not sure why. Maybe the spring is just fighting back against the wind that the fan is producing, maybe? But because of that, it was hard to get the spacing right. I did, however, come up with something that I think is, is pretty funny. I was thinking about other object interactions and I remembered that people were using portable pots as joints. You see, the joints aren't powered or anything, but they're made of two parts, the base and the pot. And the pot can rotate around the base, but the two pieces will never separate. And both parts can be attached to separate things. So I attached an iron square to a pot and hung it upside down so it dangled between two fans. And then I placed two poles on either side of the square between the fans. The idea is that when neither fan is on, the wall will hang in the middle and not touch the poles, and so it won't complete the circuit. When one fan is on but the other is off, the wall will be blown to the side and hit the pole. But, and I think this is the fun part, when both fans are on, they will match each other on both sides of the wall, canceling out, and the wall will just stay in the middle, not hitting either pole. And it works! Sort of, the biggest issue here is spacing. The wall tends to swing before settling in, so you'll get these pulses, but it does eventually stop when it's supposed to. And boom, that's an XOR gate. New half adder. This isn't the most resource efficient way to organize this, I am sure, but I just can't help it. I had to make it look pretty for YouTube. So I tried to raise the XOR gate, that way I could fit it and the AND gate under it and power two fans on both sides with one shock emitter. I am still manually hitting the shock emitter to turn them on, so you'll have to just imagine that instead of a shock emitter, the electricity is coming from another logic gate, like further up the chain. That might not mean anything to some of you, because it looks like there's a lot of us brain fluffs in here now who are really just, just happy to be involved but that basically means it's actually possible to make a full adder and maybe more. I mean, that means that Tears of the Kingdom is closer to being called Tearing Complete. Still no infinite memory, but that's, that's merely a technicality. The tall XOR gate proved to be super tricky as far as spacing. I mean, I managed to find a good spot at a weird 45 degree angle with the minecart. I'm thinking of adding weight to the wall, which might make it easier to avoid the swing, as long as the fans can still move the wall just a little bit. It should still work. 
So the AND gate part is basically the same one that you saw earlier. I mean, it's a little clunky, and, and now that I think about it, I, I actually might try to make the whole half adder with just two fans instead of four. I think I can do it if I arrange it correctly. I mean, I never ran into the limit, so that's a good sign. The power for this version is being supplied to the center of the machine. The electric poles extend up on either side of the swinging wall. So I, what I did is put a conductive weapon extending out to make contact with one of the inputs from the AND gate, and then the other input from the AND gate just raises up to complete the circuit with the output. I'm surprised things didn't start levitating in your apartment. Okay, turning it on now to see if it works. And welcome back everyone who skipped forward from earlier. Once the power's on, we can run to the front and see zero, zero on the display. But when I turn the A to one, we get zero, one. When I turn the B to one, we get one, zero or two. Yes! Okay, now all we have to do is turn both to zero, and we get zero, zero again. Er, er, okay, yeah, zero, zero. Come on, yes! It worked way better than I thought it was going to while building it. I mean, I thought it was going to be flickering like crazy, but honestly, it's not that bad. That's a half adder using only transistors as switches. Now that we have the ability to string the output of one gate into the input of the next gate, we can really get some logic going. If only we can get past that damn building limit. For the full adder, I'm going to try my best to find the simplest methods possible. I mean, I suspect there are more efficient designs still waiting to be found. You may be asking, why did I even build those other gates using springs if I already knew about fans and transistors? Well. I still have a couple of ideas up my sleeves using springs that I think will come in handy. Also, we still have to figure out what to do with that capacitor. DRAM, right? Conclusion and final thoughts. All right, so we figured out some better designs for spring switch gates, but also introduced transistors into our mix. I also messed around a bit with other uses of the motor and gravity and came up with this. It's another way of making the AND gate pretty low in cost and space too, so it may come in handy. All that to say that in the next video, the goal is to put together what we've learned so far, beat the build limit if we can, and make a calculator that can add three bits. I just wanted to say before I head out of here, I really, really, really appreciate all of the attention and support. Like this last week has been insane and I feel so incredibly lucky and thankful to have had so many people watch my video and, and say such nice, kind things. And if you made it to this point, please do consider joining the crew. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna make you mop, that'll be the next guy's job. But I do have a bunch of fun stuff planned, so hit that subscribe button down below, and when you're down there, leave a comment with any suggestions or knowledge that you have to offer. Like, I'm not kidding when I say that I am unfortunately stupid. There are so many of you who know so much more about things, so please school me in the comments, make me look like a fool, dunce cap me, I dare you. All right, guys, thanks again for everything. I will see you next time. I wish that you cared. I wish that you had a conscience. I wish that you cared. Baby, if I'm being